Okay, people can hear me. Great. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you have a question, let's just kick it off. Be a slow start. I think we have about 40 people that said they would join, so that's good. Um, thanks for everyone for joining. We're um, in Philadelphia. Celia uh, Jailer, my assistant, is going to be helping us out today. Uh, she's going to be uh, writing down the questions so that I don't lose track of anybody. We're here for about an hour um, just answering questions. I don't really have an agenda other than just to uh, take the questions that you write in the chat and I'll be answering those in the order they receive. Um, there may be duplicates. We'll, uh, Celia is going to be here to help in the background. Uh, we weed, weed those out and kind of combine them if we're getting things. So uh, thank you all for joining me today. Obviously my name is Tim Eads. Uh, I run uh, the Rug Tufting Machine website as well as uh, the, the community forum that I started. And that's just really a place where I try to, you know, be somewhat involved, but I also step away and try not to um, try to let it be self-generating. Um, I hope everyone is safe. I know the world is burning and really crazy right now. Um, but, um, yeah, we're doing okay. And I just want to thank everybody who's been supportive, placed orders, do all that. We're, uh, yeah, that's really helped kind of. Uh, field things. We're also moving to a new studio. Uh, the tufting part is, which is exciting, a new warehouse to better house that. Uh, it's all been in kind of, it's it's the building that I live in, but it's uh, it was a former Jamaican church, uh, so it's not super small. Um, so, yeah, so go ahead and ask some questions in uh, wait, are we, we're getting a comment about subtitles. So do you know how, oh wait, closed caption? Yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm seeing, it's not showing, let's see here. Are you seeing the ability to do closed captions on there? Because I'm definitely seeing a, a button, but I, I'm clicking it and nothing is there. Thanks for your patience, everybody. This is the first time that I've done anything like this, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this live thing. Yeah, I don't think at this point you can add them. Okay. Um... So, Franco, closed captioning will be available uh, after the so after the live uh, video goes then it's actually going to be automatically published to YouTube so if that's where uh, Franco Lo Siento, you'll be able to go and see the closed captioning there so sorry about that so who's first who wants to ask a question <laughs> seeing this question here about the glue. Yeah. Why don't you start with the first one and then I'll, I'll do something. Then you okay. Uh, knot pile. <clears throat> I'm just going to jump right in. This is actually a pretty common question that I get. And this is a really challenging thing because glue glue is basically really hard to get in non-toxic so the alternatives are PVA glue or Elmer's glue which I definitely recommend for wall pieces it's not quite durable enough I don't personally think for a floor or rug piece um, and that's because it doesn't some something about it it doesn't hold it in there now we haven't done extensive testing for that but I think there could be some like a PVA rabbit glue kind of thing that may be durable and flexible enough 
that is not the 1132 um, but I think that just needs to be tested so that's the big kind of the big thing um, yeah does this I hope that answers your question so I mean basically you know part of this community is hopefully people are testing their own things trying things and then giving input and you know giving back to the community so we're all kind of learning this together traditionally tufting has been uh, kind of a closed industry industry situation and so uh, potentially we're trying to open that up and allow um, you know trying to trying to build a community of learning here so I got my next question here which is I was wondering if there's any reason the tax strips can't be on the outside of the frame uh, how can I not get jabbed um, yes they absolutely can be on the outside the main thing is that you just want your cloth to be as tight as possible and th and that's like the big thing um, for non jabbing uh, you can get some foam strips or pull noodles and you can cut cut the pull noodle lengthwise and wrap around your frame uh, that's a really good way to do it um, that's what some people do so the f like foam strips or, or uh, pull noodles yeah for sure Do I ever get jabbed on the shin all the time? We're, we are constantly gouging ourselves here. Um, I don't have anything covering any of my attacks, so uh, that's maybe I'm a bit of a masochist. All right, who's got uh, another question? Um, so you, can you answer Franco in Spanish? Sure. <laughs> Let him know that s subtitles will be available after. Yeah. All right, we're ready for additional questions. question is do you trim or clean your rugs on the loom or when it's off the loom it's easier to do it on the loom in fact it's easier to basically um, glue it after you finish trim all the excess stuff the front we do the front end as much of the I mean the we do the back totally trimmed down and then we kind of clean up the front and then we glue it and let it dry and that way when we cut it off of the frame um, it it's basically ready to be finished so that's a that's kind of a big um, that's kind of a big help because it's having it vertically or having it kind of stretched kind of keeps it and makes it a little bit easier to deal with um, so that's kind of what we found um, alright next question is do you ever use non-wool yarn? Yes, we will. We have the eco cotton that we sell, um, but we we're also we we are kind of constantly in the studio testing new and different yarns, and that's partially so that we can kind of figure out some other options for people. Um, but I would also, yeah, I would also say we're like we always experiment, and we're always that's another thing in the community that we'd really want you to experiment with um, now if you're talking about specific durability for a rug then you're really going to be limited to what kinds of yarns that you use like forget acrylic acrylic is just gonna peel and and break down and be terrible um, you really want a rug wool and it needs to be specifically for rugs because it it's basically a less washed uh, version and so um, uh, it's less like refined than wool that you like knit with so basically 
basically you need to find something and, and it can be bamboo cotton maybe less for the for the floor most carpets in the industry whether it be wall to wall or just regular floor are usually done in nylon and nylon's plastic we really don't want that so um you know that's why the wool is so good is because traditionally speaking that's what rugs have been made of so so that is that's kind of a good standby um okay so i've got another question here i have a large commission six and a half by ten would you recommend doing multiple pieces or a big one i think it's so much easier to do it as one piece like so much easier to do it as one piece because you're especially if your pattern is kind of complicated you're going to have to be stretching it like getting it all together um it, it's kind of super hard to match that up especially if it's a geometric pattern if it's more organic you might be able to like piece it together but i think if you can kind of um uh, had some basically had some pieces that are you know had a had an opportunity to make a big frame as as once then as one piece then i think you should do that um, and I just want to welcome new people. If you're just joining us, uh, we've jumped right into questions. Uh, I'm from Philadelphia in Philadelphia, so thanks for joining. And we're just going through questions. If you have a question, just post it in the chat. And Celia, my assistant, is here to help fill the questions and kind of write them down so it kind of goes a little bit smoother. All right, so next question up is, is there a source for colored felt backing? Um, so I can only find the thin craft felt. Truth be told, the thin felt craft also works. Um, so I would just recommend looking for a polyester, like a recycled polyester felt, which most felt nowadays, unless it's 100% wool, is made out of polyester. So um, sometimes it's like mixed fiber. So that's what I would. That's what I would do. Um, I think that's good. And it can be really thin. It doesn't. You know, basically the the primary goal of the backing, the final backing, is to actually just seal everything, the, the layers together, so that it all kind of uh, closes it in, and that way, like, wear and tear, it won't hit the, the actual yarns. Um, okay, next question. Where would you suggest looking if you need electrical repairs on your machine? Honestly, I just contact us. Um, I can do all the repairs on the machines. I know if you're not obviously in North America, that might be a little bit cost prohibitive. But um, if you're not in North America, then I would say just try to find like a local. This is more of a like an electric electronic kind of repair place maybe there's a lot of these uh, local volunteer uh, organizations that will repair stuff even for free or for a lower price so that's kind of where I would start is just see if there's like a local organization that can repair like basic um, you know household items you know household equipment I think that's a good place to start because most of those people are gonna have some kind of understanding of how how the you know the mechanics of how that works but if you're in North America just reach out to us uh, we do repairs and offer parts um, long after the machine has been used we'll just charge like a small fee so um, okay next one if I'm planning a frame in a cramped space is it okay to tuft uh, within one or two inches of the edge yes ultimately that you can tuft pretty close to the edge I would say uh, the biggest downside is your needle might actually hit the wood of your frame so obviously you don't want that to happen but I think you know you just really need to test that um, that's that's a bit trickier things um, okay what's the quietest compressor I live in a condo with neighbors uh, the quietest one that we found and there's a link directly on the site if you go to the help center under high pile it's a california air tool i believe is the brand and it's pretty quiet um you can also google on youtube you can have uh you can there are play people that have built 
soundproof boxes for compressors. Now you need some space for air to come in and go out um, for the motor, but those will even quiet it more. But the but the California Air one is is pretty quiet. And there's a, a, other brands that use the same kind of uh, you know motor on those, and essentially it's a, an oilless um, oilless motor. So okay, so next question. Where can I buy tufting guns uh, different from the ones in your shop? Well, um, there's not really different ones. I mean, experimenting, there's not... A tufting gun does basically one of two things. It, it can either do low pile, cut, and loop, or it can do high pile and cut and loop. And, you know, the Hoffman can do a J loop, which basically creates it, it when it tufts around the cloth, one, one length is shorter than the other length. Um, but they're, outside of that, there's not like a ton of variety that you can find. And, and there's no other needles and that sort of stuff. That, you know, we do ha happen to have a we sell a larger needle for the loop that you can replace um, but it still functions the same way okay so let's see here I've got another question I see clips of people using non automatic tufting gun but still have a trigger maybe for detailed areas do you know what it is exactly do you sell it I don't sell it it's called a speed tufter um, it was actually a precursor to the tufting gun and even uh, I think it was even before uh, punch needle it, it's been around for like maybe 200 years or something we're actually working on finding the history but um, but essentially it's called a speed tufter um, and you can find them on eBay there's actually a couple of companies that even make them now so just look for that um, I've seen you use a sheep chair for cleaning up the rugs this is true I'm looking for a cheaper alternative to a carpet shear. This is a really common question that's come up quite a few times in the forum. Um, a sheep shear we use for the back and kind of rough cleaning up in the front, but it's not really great for carving. Um, or the carving means like cutting dimensions, line dimensions into your design. And the reason it's not great for it is it has one a big handle so it's like really hard to grip that you know thing and it's like vibrating mechanical thing and you're trying to like carve these precise lines and then the you know head of it itself is like pretty large so that kind of creates some difficulty if you're trying to like create these like really defined lines so you really if you're if you're wanting to get into like carpet carving and even like hair shears We've tested. We've never gotten really good results. I think the speed is way too slow. So if you want to do a lot of carving, you need to drop some coin on NC Carpets Carpet Carver, and those are about, I think maybe about a thousand bucks. I found one on eBay a couple of years ago, uh, but I don't see them very often. So I'd say, you know, your best bet is probably if you're just wanting to do simple carving, just do it by hand with some scissors. Now, for flat shearing, that's also kind of a difficult thing because the sheep shears aren't really for that. You can definitely try, but you have to be really careful because if you're rotating that tool ever so slightly, then it may like gouge into your design, and obviously you don't want that to happen. Um, it will work, but you just have to be really careful. Again, NC Carpet actually sells a shear, but those are like super expensive. So this is kind of a difficult kind of scenario that you're in um, when you're trying to, if you're trying to get into more of these like refined things, you know, it's not necessarily for a hobbyist. Um, okay, so I have the ZQ2. It sometimes spits oil in my work. Where does the oil come from? And how can I stop it? Um, hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, oil. Well, obviously you oil the machine. So you may be over-oiling it. 
Um, or I would say store it when you're not when it's not in use. Wrap uh, towels around it, like shop towels, so it can absorb that oil. It doesn't, the gearbox, the metal kind of gearbox has grease, but that wouldn't necessarily, that wouldn't do that. I would, I would say you may be over oiling it. Uh, I would actually take the whole head apart and really get all that oil out or get Q-tips and kind of clean, clean everything up really well. Uh, if you don't want to take it apart, that that's going to, you know, potentially do that. Um, okay. Do you know where I can buy large amounts of rug wool from Europe? How much wool would I need if I'm tufting two by six meters by one by nine meters? So <clears throat> we say uh, ha it's eight ounces for a square foot. So that's going to translate to about what 0 0.25 kilograms for a size that's like this big I don't know what 12 by 12 is but um, in metric we use this terrible imperial system here but um, but yeah so where does the wool come from well Airedale yarn sells yarn that's uh, that's really good quality it's like rug yarn so other than that I don't really know to be honest we are actually working on distribution in the UK so uh, to offer everything there so um, yeah, I think that's your best bet is to use Airedale yarns. If you Google or if you, sorry, if you search in the forum, you know, there, uh, that's one that comes up a lot, but where to buy like a quote large quantity, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Why do I choose to, this is, this is more of a existential thing. I think, why do you choose to work? With tufting as an artistic expression, where do you draw inspiration? I've never been one, I've never been someone who adheres closely to a craft. Um, I actually have an undergrad in graphic design and my MFA is in ceramics. Um, and then when I moved to Philadelphia, I got a job. I've been screen printing a really long time on fabric. Um, like yardage and so I got a job at the fabric workshop as a master printer there so I worked the fabric workshop for six years and left started my own line of canvas bags had that brand for about six years and then one of my assistants was a she was a carpet designer in Michigan working for Scott group and basically she was like told me about tufting and I was like what is this tufting thing and so that's kind of when I started using it for my own I, I initially thought we would be actually adding it to bags but that never happened um, and for my own expression yeah it just varies like I just kind of am always actually looking for things that I'm excited about ways of, of making and working I certainly don't think that you know, uh, you have to stay with one craft. This is just kind of a, a tool that I use to express certain things. And most of my designs, actually, I design in Illustrator first. Um, so they're, for the most part, really hardcore geometric, just geometric shapes and patterns and designs, things that I've been interested in for a long time. Um, so yeah and and i don't i'm not really like a sketch sketching kind of person or even a hand drawing person i'll just if i'm you know wanting to do a new rug design i'll just go to illustrator you know work it out in illustrator and then you know project it onto the loom and tuft it from there and then you know the different heights and stuff i can kind of open up some different variation okay so this is the uh, same as before. What's the best way to estimate how much yarn you need for a project? Uh, go to the Help Center uh, on the Tufting website, and it's for the worst um, system, the non-ometric system. It's eight ounces for a square foot. That's kind of roughly what we say, and that's for about a pile that's about three quarters of an inch. So obviously. 
you as you get more involved in tufting you'll realize the one of the worst things that you can do is run out of yarn so over buy the colors that you want so that you have enough to do the project that you want to want to do um, have you tried running sizes and textures of yarns at all at once yeah we've tried quite a few different kinds when i was first starting i was just buying all kinds of crazy stuff and testing it um, and that's kind of when I found that the machines were mostly hard to break. Um, we've even tried ribbons. At one point, about six or eight months ago, we were going to offer strips of fabric, which you can also use. Um, so, so yeah, I'd say just experiment and have fun. Uh, what fabric are you using to back the rugs? Well, <clears throat> if it's for the floor, then it needs to be a felt or a woven backing and I sell both of those um, but you can also use like muslin or canvas or other fabrics or it doesn't have to be something so like specific I mean these are the the black and white woven fabric on the website is actually really good uh, for it because it's such a loose weave that it can kind of go around like if you have you know little differences in heights of your tufts then it can actually like kind of help with that where you know a thicker felt or something is not going to be able to get down in those crevices as much uh, how often should I oil my machine every time you use it um, if you're using it quite a lot I would just a drop of oil every time you use it and this is you can use sewing machine oil you can use three-in-one oil you can use WD-40 even. Any oil that is a lubricating oil will work just fine. Um, will you do workshops again post-COVID? West Coast specifically? Yes, I'd love to. We, we had actually one scheduled in LA this month as you probably know and obviously that's that's postponed and it may continue to be postponed depending on how how America does uh, so far we're doing really terribly with containing it so um, yeah that's that's a less of a sure thing uh, we do want to do an online workshop I know it's not the same but um, we were going to be working on that right when everything shut down and then um, yeah I've just been super busy uh, what kind of thread should I use to stitch the edge of the rug Honestly, most people just use the same yarn that you tuft with. So, you know, if I'm tufting with a wool, then I'll just do a whip stitch if you're doing it by hand. Or if you're taking it to a place to have it stitched, then most of those people are using like a really thick cotton. It's like uh, just a thicker kind of cotton. It's not really thread. It's more like a thin yarn that they're going to run through their serger. Um basic question here I received my loop and it comes with a pack of screws what are they for they're just if stuff falls off you get it lost uh, sometimes stuff does break but the loop gun doesn't have anything that breaks um, it can certainly have some difficulties but it does yeah it's it doesn't those are just like extra for you um, is there a tufting gun that will produce cut pile larger than two and three quarter? No, not that I know of. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that exists. Uh, yeah, that would be crazy, crazy and awesome. Have you ever sealed the edge of your rugs with a glue gun or a glue made specifically for sealing edges? You're gonna want to fold over the edge. So, you glue gun, I'd say that's not the best option. Um, go check out my ultimate guide to finishing and see some options there. You're going to want to fold over the edge and you can put like a twill tape to finish it off. And that can be hot glued, but in terms of like actually like hot gluing it. But the, the edges don't need to be sealed if the back is glued well. So I think that's kind of the thing is if your if your back is like sealed really well, 
then no matter you could actually just cut right down the middle of it and if you've done a good job those threads won't come out outside of just like a few um, I live in the Netherlands thanks for joining us and I can't find carpet tack anywhere are there alternatives yes you can just use really small nails and just nail into the edges um, if I think there I, we I think I actually answered this in the forum recently so you may be able to search the forum um, but if not ask the question in the forum and I can give you a couple of photos there are other ways to do it what happens if you use yarn that's too small or too big if it's too small then you're basically creating work for yourself that's the worst case scenario there I mean I guess if it's like thread that you sew with it may not actually tuft but the idea when you're tufting is you want to put as much yarn into the needle as that will fit in there and that's logistically that's gonna fill each tuft it's gonna make it a full tuft there so that on the front side then you're not gonna see the backing cloth so you want to be you know to create like a full little like bloom there um, so if you're using really thin thread or thin yarn and you're only putting one strand in then you're tufting and there's not gonna be a lot covering the front the other downside to that is if you're using thin and you're tufting the lines then those lines need to be super close together for it to be full so if I'm tufting with a really thin yarn then you're you're putting three or four or even five strands of that yarn into the needle at a single time and that's gonna make it fuller on the front and also make it where you don't have to do so many lines it's gonna save you a lot of time when you're tufting but aesthetically if you're okay with seeing the backing if you're just doing drawings then you don't there's really no roles in terms of like yeah it's kind of um, yeah it's it's kind of really is that becomes like more of an aesthetic thing too big it just won't tuft that's the biggest downside to that it'll it may jam your machine and the machine will like beep uh, other than oiling excuse me what other general maintenance is important you just want to make sure everything is tight all the nuts and bolts like you know the top bar the bottom bar where it connects into the gear just make sure that all of that stuff is tight like it can loosen over time and so you know it's I think it's important to kind of keep keep everything tight so that you know it doesn't pop off and you don't know where it, it comes from but other than that they're pretty durable sometimes the adapter does break um, I sell the adapter separately if that happens to you but um, that's the biggest thing Two people asked about sourcing good tufting cloth, one in Paris and one in Mexico. Um, this is always, this is one of the biggest challenges. Um, so basically, you're, I would search, because punch needle is so popular right now, I would search for suppliers for punch needle cloth. Those are going to be where that's basically they're almost synonymous together um, as the tufting cloth now the tufting cloth has polyester in it so it's more durable than a cotton you know tufting cloth but I would say those are that's a good place to start now again I'm working on distribution for the UK that I know you're still in France you're still gonna have import but that's kinda where I would start um, are the steps to change the loop pile size the same as the steps in your cut? No. Um, it's actually different. Although the video that has both is actually, I have a new way of d changing the loop pile, um, the height on the loop pile. So it's also on YouTube. Um, but I, if you just post a video or post a question in the forum, then I can actually... Um, I'll, I'll just send you the link to it and that way everybody has it 
if I'm using size 4 yarn, how many strands uh, should I use at once? Uh, size 4. Yarn sizes is so not always universal, so I would say, going back to what I said a couple of questions ago, which is just put as many strands into the needle that will fit, that feels comfortable, but it should also feel tight. The, the cut can't handle as many strands as the loop, so you're going to want to, um, you might have to like do less, but if you have the loop machine, you're just putting as many as it will go in there that feels like the yarn can still move. Um, and even really fat, fat yarns, if it has like a slight stretch to it, then that even works. Like you, the, the loop machine will actually tuft in there just fine. So catching up on questions here. How do you get to the forum? Uh, if you go to the Tufting Gun website, then you just click on the community. It's, it's the community. Uh, hopefully that's how you found this live feed, uh, but maybe not. Maybe you found it through Instagram, but if you uh, just go to the tuftinggun.com website, the top menu, say join our community or our community and then there's a link in there and it has an app and it's a pretty cool little thing um, another common question that we get a lot is what yarn is good synthetic what size acrylic um, you know essentially if basically there's no limits now there is a disclaimer with that if it's a rug for the floor then stay away from acrylic uh, you want a nylon, maybe bamboo, possibly cotton, wool, because you need something that is durable. And if you just look at rugs, like tufted rugs that are being manufactured, like at Ikea or Target or something, and see, if you just search tufted rugs and you can see the content, yarn content, then that will give you a good idea. Nylon is a really common one. We don't like plastic here, so we don't use nylon, but that is what most are made out of. So if you're doing wall pieces though, the sky's the limit. You just do, you can do ribbons, you can do cottons, you can do any kind of yarn. It doesn't really matter synthetic. If it's just for looks, then kind of the sky's the limit. Um, it needs to have some kind of uh, flex to it, obviously. You can't do like super thick stiff stuff but you know outside of that you can you know there's a lot of variety in there um are there any emerging tufting artists you're excited about man it's just such a hard question because my instagram is full of that um i who, who am i excited i'm excited about so many i think this is a trick question maybe <laughs> Uh, so he's looking at me like, say somebody. Um, <laughs> I would say the what I well the one thing I'm excited about the community is we're like most people in the community are beginners. So I would say that's just look through there, look at their work on Instagram. Join Tough to the World. The hashtag follow the hashtag follow the hashtag of tufting gun and you'll start to see some like really exciting ones yeah trish anderson for sure like she's um she is an amazing tufting artist for yeah 100 percent um yeah and she's been doing it a, a little bit longer than i have so um yeah, she's she's out there. There's so many. I'm am sorry. I'm terrible with names. Um, do you know natural glue? Uh, well, maybe I'm a little confused by this question. Most rugs, until very recently, were backed with um, latex, and latex is technically natural. It comes from a tree. But it, because it's natural, it will also break down and crumble over time. So we don't recommend that for rugs now. That's why we say the 1132, which is a synthetic latex, 
it has yes it has more chemicals in it but it also won't break down you can really do like a PVA or Elmer's those are as natural as it gets um, so not super non-toxic zero toxicity long-lasting acid-free both PVA and Elmer's and those work really well for most things except floor rugs um, all right we got another one here will I be getting any more backing like the poly cotton version yeah we've had s just such a crazy supply chain issues like we our supplies come from a bunch of different places and and for the last you know almost four months now it's been hit and miss with some things and you know luckily that's starting to clear up a bit but at times there were well one at times there were uh, some of our suppliers that just completely closed uh, for three months so that was like a no-go and then some of our suppliers uh, you know we do import stuff from China and you know basically because of all the PPE being exported out of China that became priority for obvious reasons so that meant you know tufting supplies weren't necessarily coming out of China so there were just long delays um, yeah so all right we got no other questions um, I see one here can you recommend cut pile machines other than the ones sold in your shop we stopped selling the ZQ2 because it's total pain it breaks it's really heavy it's hard to use technically it can do cut but I would say if you're a beginner stay away from the ZQ2 you really need some kind of basic understanding of how you know the mechanics of tufting works before you do that um, for yeah I don't know I mean I can't think of any other ones I mean Hoffman is the biggest brand in tufting machines so I don't you know they sell they don't even sell like the AK1 or 2 they sell similar to ones like the ZQ3 and stuff but you know other than that I think I don't know any um, I've been making tufted quote poofs and wondered if uh, yeah use latex or just back of the fabric oh I've seen people I see um, well yeah so this kind of comes back to the thing if it's if it needs to be flexible which it kind of sounds like it is like then I'd say you want to lean towards a latex which is in the ultimate guide to finishing video is a, a Holden's latex that we recommend that's like really holds it in there and that's gonna allow for like super flexibility but again, if it's not for the floor, then like Elmer's or PVA is a good solution to that. All right, any other questions? Do you have any general advice for beginners? Um, <clears throat> general, it, so you suggest that I answer if I have general advice for beginners yes I do one there are some areas of a new craft that you can cut corners and there are some areas of a craft that you should not cut corners and one of those is the tufting cloth people are always trying to and maybe it's because they can't find it uh, but they're always wanting to experiment with that and I would say as a beginner that's like baseline something if you're testing in a bunch of different fabrics then it's really hard to know if you're if you're tufting correctly so I would say get the tufting cloth because it's it's really durable it's gonna hold up better than anything you can find so you know once you get good at it then you can potentially you know branch out but people like Trish Anderson doesn't branch out you know because it's it's like this is her craft so she you know uses that because it works so well and she doesn't there's not a question mark 
around whether or not it's going to hold up. Um, and do cone yarn. Like, get your yarn feeding situation correct. If you're trying to do balls of yarn on the floor, all these kind of crazy things, then again, you're kind of introducing things, difficulties that don't have anything to do with technique or the machine. You're kind of giving yourself more headache than what is, um, you know, necessary. And so I would say, even if it's just in the beginning, just get some coned yarn, uh, get a really good cone feeding system and the cloth, and then you have kind of a baseline that you can kind of experiment and go outside of that. But, you know, to begin with, you want something that works really well. Um, is the gun heavy? Is tufting hard on the body? The AK-1 and 2 weigh about 4 pounds. So, you know, I think it's... Uh, I forget what that is in kilo. It, um, Yeah, it weighs about 4 pounds. I mean... They're not super heavy. The AK-3 is, is kind of heavy, so I would say I wouldn't define the AK-1 and 2 as heavy. Um, tufting can be hard on your body if you're doing it for long periods of time. So I actually wear, if I'm tufting, I wear motorcycle gloves. Um, so you do, actually, do you mind grabbing those down there? I can show them. Yeah, those are perfect. So um, sometimes I have a uh, carpal tunnel. So I actually bought my uh, doctor recommended these motorcycle gloves. And the reason these are so good, and, and there's a bunch of different kinds, but these have padding here and here. So when you're holding the tufting gun and it's kind of jerking, it this absorbs that you know, it absorbs that up. So it actually helps quite a bit. But there's definitely going to be, if you're tufting for a long period of time, there's definitely going to be some wear and tear on your shoulders, uh, upper arms for sure. And so just like anything, you know, you'll get better at it. Your body will get used to it. But take breaks. Uh, when we do the workshop, um, generally people's upper shoulder after, you know, six hours of tufting and that's the first time they've tufted they're kind of brutalized um so you know yeah i would say just take care of yourself take breaks take frequent breaks um you know do anything that you would normally do to yourself to you know hot pads cold pads that sort of thing uh, you know at night and that kind of thing um are there any craft rug trade shows? We're actually working on one for the East Coast, not the West Coast. Um, we really working on Tuft, the very first Tuft Con that's gonna that's gonna be in Philly. You know, we're still kind of. I, I mean, I want to have it. It's it was supposed to be in October. I think we're still good to go. So I'd say, um, you know, cross, fingers crossed. But then the idea is to expand out into the other thing. Um, since I just answered the weight question, I just glanced over and saw this one comment about the counterweight. Yes, you can definitely set up a counterweight. Uh, you know, post a, a it, it's basically a cool tool balancer. It's for balancing heavy tools. Um, and you definitely can do that and that will help a lot there's still going to be some kind of pulling and stuff that happens in there so I'd say um, yeah do you wind your own cones what winder do you use yes we well I'm fortunate enough that because I sell yarn I invested in a couple of industrial yarn coning machines but before I was doing that you just it's not a cone but it's a ball you can get a yarn baller from that like knitters use to ball to put stuff on balls and then you can slide that onto an empty cone and that's going to do a pretty good job it's not a hundred percent but it'll do a lot better than a ball in a bucket or 
you know, some kind of crazy one pound Karen thing that you get on Amazon. Um, so yeah. And you can just get those anywhere. Just search uh, Yarn Baller and you'll get a lot. Derugs. Derugs with two and a half inch pile end up looking like mashed grass or is it like 70, 70 shag? Yeah, 100%. 70 shag. Like we have quite a few around here. Um, so do you want to go find... There, this is like a weird pile over there. Maybe people can see. How do I tuft in continuous straight rows? Um, I think I think practice is the maybe the, the answer to that. Um, yeah, I'd say practice. You get you'll get so good at it then. Okay, we got a shag rug coming in here. So this is not quite Yeah, it's not quite two and a half. It's maybe two inches or something. Yeah, and you can see and this is wool, so it's yeah, super shaggy. Um you know, yeah, it will it will hold a pattern just like um, you know any carpet will, but but it's shaggy. And then depends on if you have if you use different rug uh, yarn, you know it can kind of lay down and kind of do this situation. This is silk. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have seen anti-static wool yarn. Have you ever been zapped? No. Oh, you mean by the yarn? No, 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 no. Uh, that I don't think that's I've never I've never heard of that happening. Um, okay, I'm building a frame. Any recommendations on setting up a feeding system? Yeah, go to the help center on the tuftinggun.com website, search yarn feed or something, and you'll get like four or five different options um, of like things to things how to do it. Um, Francisco, I, it's, uh, well, we ship to Mexico, but I don't, I don't know anyone who sells there. So yeah, we've definitely sent some to Mexico city, a couple of people in Mexico city quite a few times. We've, yeah. So I'd say we, yeah, we can send there. Um, any, any more questions? Coming up almost, yeah, almost an hour. Are there any things to consider when getting a pneumatic? I already have a regular one. I'm considering getting a second one that does higher piles. Um, well, you're, for the pneumatic one, you obviously need a compressor. So that's the big thing. And I would say when you're going up to the pneumatic one, you definitely want the yarn on cones or the yarn feeding to be like super refined and figured out and I would say the tufting cloth like the cloth that you're tufting into it needs to be either the gray one or the white one that I sell it's just like there's no cutting corners on that because the needle on it is six millimeters so like three eighths of an inch in diameter and it just will shred most other cloths like for sure so you have to be really careful um yeah so let's do if anybody has maybe let's just take two more questions um yeah are any of your machines ce certified the adapters are ce certified um, you know, I don't actually know a ton about that certification, but I can tell you that the power adapter situation is CE certified. So, um, how much detail? Yeah, uh, so let's just jump back. Lisa, yes, the video will be published uh, to the public. It'll be put on YouTube to the public, and I'll post the link to that after this is over. Um, how much detail can you achieve? Quite a bit. Like, yeah, you can... It's kind of, I'd say, difficult and challenging like any craft in the beginning. But then once you get better at it, you can get some like really fine, fine details. Um, 
let's see. So Keika, we answered this. So I would recommend for if you're allergic to latex, uh, just use an Elmer's or PBA. So don't worry about the latex thing. Flexible. I mean, the 1132 synthetic latex isn't flexible. So I think you you're just going to want to test some flexible fabric glues is where I would start. So that's you can there's a bunch of different brands and I would just do some testing to see if you can find one that you know works um, so uh, handle the needles and it comes in one sizes uh, all right is there any way you can handle ch or change the needles the low pile machines only have one size actually I sell a larger one for the loop but the the real height changes is is going to happen with the the high pile. And how do I modify the machine to get a longer loop? So this came up earlier. Um, I'm going to post. There is a video on YouTube that I published for how to change the loop pile. So I'll publish publish that. So um, all right, I think. Unless you have other questions, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today and for Celia being a huge help organizing all these. We did quite a, quite a lot here uh, today. Thank you for joining us. And, you know, if you missed part of it or all of it, uh, feel free to come back and watch, you know, watch it after it's been published. Um, yeah, so... I think that's that's it. Thanks again, and see you in the forum. And if you're interested, we'll do this kind of thing again in the future. And just, I'd love to hear your feedback. So thanks a lot.